This week, we've got so much to cover, there is no way this is going to be released on time. So, ain't nothing to it, but to get into it. I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape Global 20 Vape Science Advocacy News for the week ending 16th September 2022. It was just 10 months ago that the Hong Kong City Council voted to ban electronic cigarettes, heat not burn, and other alternative products. This led 200,000 Hong Kong vapors to stockpile as much as they could afford before the ban went into full effect. But as I stated when the ban was announced, it's not the only consequence of the Hong Kong ban. Hong Kong e-cigarette ban reduces air export volumes 10%. Value of banned re-export cargo estimated at $17 billion. You know, just like I predicted when I learned about the Hong Kong ban, Hong Kong International Airport can no longer be used to ship all the products made in the neighboring vape production capital of the world, Shenzhen, China. The ban also means the products can no longer be transshipped through Hong Kong when brought in by truck for onward transport overseas. Although air transshipment cargo and transit cargo, which remains on board aircraft, and vessels is exempt. A survey of members suggests 333,000 tons of air cargo per year are affected by the ban. With the value of the re-export cargo estimated to exceed 120 billion yen, Hong Kong Association of Freight Forwarding and Logistics said, the ban has stifled the freight logistics industry environment and negatively impacted the livelihoods of its employees. HAFFA Chairman Gary Lowe said, since the Legislative Council passed the ordinance in October last year, the association has continued to receive a large number of complaints from our members and other industry stakeholders, reflecting that the ordinance has had a seriously detrimental effect on the business environment. We have written to the Chief Executive slash Policy Bureau on this matter four times. The ordinance has led to a serious decline in Hong Kong's overall air export volume, causing the industry, airlines, cargo terminals, and Hong Kong International Airport to lose hundreds of thousands of tons of re-exports every year. This is bound to shake Hong Kong's status as a regional transshipment hub, and people's livelihoods have been dealt a huge blow. With 333,000 tons of air cargo no longer being routed through Hong Kong, this alternative smoking ban has proven to be more harmful than all the products that they banned. And for those of you that are new to the channel, all of these products are now being sent directly from Shenzhen Bowen International Airport. And I'm sure a good number of jets landing in Hong Kong already have their cargo base full of products that Hong Kong prohibited from being trucked onto their cargo hub. Just another example of how prohibition doesn't work. Moving on. Scientists discover how air pollution may trigger lung cancer in never smokers. This Eureka Alert announces a study conducted by the European Society for Medical Oncology. From Paris, France, 10 September 2022, a new mechanism has been identified through which very small pollutant particles in the air may trigger lung cancer in people who have never smoked, paving the way to new prevention approaches and development of therapies according to late-breaking data reported at the ESMO Congress 2022 by scientists of the Francis Crick Institute and University College London, funded by Cancer Research UK. The particles, which are typically found in vehicle exhaust, 
and smoke from fossil fuels are associated with non-small cell lung cancer risks, accounting for over 250,000 lung cancer deaths globally per year. The same particles in the air that derive from the combustion of fossil fuels exacerbating climate change are directly impacting human health via an important and previously overlooked cancer-causing mechanism in lung cells. The risk of lung cancer from air pollution is lower than from smoking, but we have absolutely no control over what we all breathe. Globally, more people are exposed to unsafe levels of air pollution than to toxic chemicals and cigarette smoke. And this new data link the importance of addressing climate health to improving human health, says Charles Swanton, the Francis Crick Institute and Cancer Research UK chief clinician, London, UK, who presented the research results at the ESMO 2022 Presidential Symposium on Saturday, 10 September. You know, what an amazing study, which is leading lung cancer researchers to use an alternative treatment approach. Commenting on the results, Tony Mock, Chinese University of Hong Kong, not affiliated with the study said, this research is intriguing and exciting as it means that we can ask whether in the future it will be possible to use lung scans to look for precancerous lesions in the lungs and try to reverse them with medicines, such as interleukin-1 beta inhibitors. We don't know yet whether it will be possible to use highly sensitive EGFR profiling on blood or other samples to find non-smokers who are predisposed to lung cancer and may benefit from lung scanning. So discussions are still very speculative. Like Swanson, he stresses the importance of reducing air pollution to lower the risk of lung diseases, including cancer. We have known about the link between pollution and lung cancer for a long time. And we now have the possible explanation for it. As consumption of fossil fuels goes hand in hand with pollution and carbon emissions, we have a strong mandate for tackling these issues. From both environmental and health reasons, Mock concluded. And I know I'm sure there's somebody out there right now yelling at their TV or yelling at their phone right now saying, this has nothing to do with vaping. So why is it included in the news this week? Well, Michael, you're 100% right. This study has absolutely nothing to do with vaping. So instead of yelling at me, reporting it, maybe you should redirect your anger at the Irish Mirror authors Matt Gibson, and Sophie Collins. You see, Michael, they published Warning to Vapors as Scientists Raise Alarm Over Potential New Wave of Cancer. Their terrible tabloid article states, Scientists have raised the alarm after studies carried out by the Francis Crick Institute suggest a new wave of cancer-causing by vaping could happen in around 10 years time. The study was originally looking into why an average of one in eight patients diagnosed with lung cancer in the UK do not smoke, according to The Independent. And I'm not even going to get into what else The Independent reported or continue to read this article any further as it lies and completely twists this revolutionary study into a, not just another excuse to bash the single best way to quit smoking. Fortunately, Tom Marina already commented on this putrid publication. This is such a disgusting display of manufactured news, it defies description. Researchers did not in any way study vaping at all. Absolutely repugnant. Fire whoever approved this for publication today. Yeah, let's give Tom Marina a round of applause. Yeah, 
That's awesome. Great job, Tom. Well, you know what? Since we're in a cheering mood already, Governor Mike Dunleavy has vetoed a bill sponsored by Senator Gary Stevens, Republican from Kodiak, that would have placed a 35% statewide tax on vape pens and vaping liquid. The bill also would have raised the minimum age to purchase tobacco cigarettes and other tobacco products from 19 to 21 years old. Vape pens and vaping liquid currently are exempt from the state's tobacco taxes, though various municipalities have levied their own taxes on the product. No, Kodiak Daily Mirror, I will not purchase a subscription just to finish reading this story. I mean, that would be like me asking the viewers of this video after each story to become a supporting member of this channel. You should be grateful people are reading your content. Like I am grateful when people subscribe for free to this channel. So just like how Steven just stopped watching this video because of me ranting, I'm gonna go to another source for the exact same story. From the Anchorage Daily News we find, Governor Dunleavy vetoes Alaska tax on vaping and increase the minimum tobacco purchase age. The governor cannot veto policy provisions from bills passed by the legislature. He can only veto dollar amounts from appropriations bills or entire pieces of legislation. In a letter explaining his first veto of a bill in almost three years, Dunleavy said, it was not possible to separate out the tobacco age increase from the new tax on vaping, meaning he had to veto the whole thing. After a back and forth in the state capitol about the size of the new tax, a 35% rate of wholesale was set in the bill, which is less than half the state tax rate of other tobacco products. The Alaska Department of Revenue had earlier estimated that a 25% tax on e-cigarettes would net the state upwards of $1.2 million of revenue per year. Stevens said Dunleavy had warned him that if the vaping tax rate was over 25%, the governor would veto the bill. And the governor's office confirmed that this is exactly why Dunleavy struck it down. That is awesome news. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, we finally have a governor who stands up for common sense legislation. Harm reduction products must never be taxed like the combustible tobacco products. So let's give Governor Dunleavy a round of applause. Yes, that is fantastic. Thank you. Six and a half hours later. Manufacturers and consumers now generate 44.7 million tons of electronic waste each year, containing up to $65 billion worth of raw materials such as gold, silver, and platinum. The amount of e-waste worldwide is expected to increase by nearly 17% by 2021 to 52.2 million tons, or about 8% per year. E-cigarette products are e-waste because they contain lithium-ion batteries, heating elements, and circuit boards, which may contain plastics and heavy metals. While the world's leading jurisdictions generally have legislation governing e-waste, they often don't have rules specifically designed for electronic cigarettes, heated tobacco products, or evaporators. To fill this gap, manufacturers of electronic nicotine delivery equipment have developed their own initiatives to address the e-waste problem. The research and market report lists the following examples. Philip Morris International has established centers in Europe and Asia to inspect, process, and separate materials from electronic devices for recycling. British American Tobacco has replaced the plastic elements of its steam products with pulp alternatives. Nicaren International has launched a return program for old equipment through recycling bins in stores. 
Imperial Brands has launched a recycling program for used electronic cigarette devices and cigarette bombs. Other e-cigarette companies such as Dot Mod, Shanlan, and Dovepo have launched their own recycling programs through return programs. Inikin is working on battery use plans. Recycling companies such as Gaiagica and TerraCycle have partnered with vape manufacturers to provide services for collecting and recycling e-waste. You know, we talked about TerraCycle offering vape recycling with their mail-in zero waste box before. And let me tell you, that is some fantastic news. So many other companies are jumping on board right now to recycle our unused vaping devices. Now, if we could just get everybody aware of their vape recycling options, I'm sure that they would all be a huge success. Kind of like how Philip Morris International announced his appointment of two former US FDA officials, highlighting the company's continued commitment to smoke-free product science and regulation. Dr. Badrul Chowdhury, appointed Chief Life Sciences Officer, and like we talked about recently, Dr. Matthew Holman, appointed Vice President, U.S. Scientific Engagement and Regulatory Strategy. Both are former USDFDA officials, now working for PMI. You know, it's pretty sad that these two doctors can save more lives working for PMI than they could working for the FDA. Regardless, it's obvious that PMI is pleasing their investors. Philip Morris, more profits could mean a dividend hike in September. Philip Morris is probably not seen as the most innovative company, nor a company that has done much positive for human health. In the old days, that was true. But that old perception should be changed. Since 2008, this company has spent more than $8 billion on research into reduced risk products, doing more than most organizations to switch people over from dangerous traditional cigarettes into lower risk ones. Investing in the economy, creating high quality research jobs and improving human health. Talk about changing their image to improve public health. More than the FDA. And just like Juul Labs. Juul Labs creates online resource hub to aid responsible retailing. Jewel Labs has launched a new online resource center for UK retailers to help them remain compliant when selling vaping products. You know, I'd read more about what they've done, but the rest of this article talks about their website. And since the QR code is plastered in the middle of the article, would get this channel a strike, you're gonna have to settle for my summary as follows. Their new portal outlines their underage use prevention policies. The challenge 25 age gating procedures for any retailer, an ongoing mystery shopper compliance program, advice and guidelines for retails, as well as testimonials highlighting best practices, keeping these harm reduction products out of kids' hands and in the hands of smokers, choosing a safer alternative product. Frankly, folks, they should have done this a long time ago. And I feel like if they would have done this years and years ago in the United States, things could be so different today. I mean, it's not all bad. From the Independent Women's Forum, we find Arizona used tobacco and vaping rates at the lowest levels recorded. That is great news out of the Grand Canyon states. In 2022, youth tobacco and vapor product use rates reached their lowest levels ever recorded. Colorado youth tobacco and vape use is at record lows, despite lawmakers' persistence in banning flavors. <laughs> Amazing work, Lindsey Straub, visiting fellow at the Independent Women's Forum. Awesome job. 
You know, just like leading Asia Pacific advocate for vaping, Nancy Lucas. Vaping petition reaches 10,000 signatures. A petition urging the World Health Organization to respect consumers' rights and end its lies against vaping has been signed by over 10,000 people. Organizers now want to hit 20,000 signatures by COP10. Actually, that's only 10,000 signatures in English because the way the website works, each language is its own petition. So technically we're at like 17,000 signatures. This is amazing work. Launched during the 2021 Voices for Vape webinar, the Right to Switch petition calls for who to stop lying to us and only provide guidance based on sound scientific facts, methodologies, and principles. You know what, folks? There's over a hundred of you that watch this Global 20 every single week. So how about we all go right now and go make a big difference? Go follow the link to go sign this petition. Right now, Bandrew, that means you. Go sign this petition. And you, you know what? You don't even need to hit pause. I'll play some music for you and wait right here for you. Matthew, this means you too. Go sign this petition right now. I know you didn't do it the last time I asked you. Go sign this petition. Seriously. Here's some music for you. Thank you. Thank you. I truly appreciate you going and signing that petition. Actually, you should have done it the last time I asked you to go do it. However, speaking of things that should have been done a long time ago, New York police underage vaping operation in Oneida, Herkimer counties lead to 10 arrests. From Syracuse, New York, the New York State Police Violent Gangs and Narcotics Unit launched Operation Vaporizer in Oneida and the Herc in Murray counties. A weeks-long initiative targeting the sale of flavored nicotine vapes to minors. The operation, conducted in partnership with several local law enforcement authorities, was launched in response to countless complaints from school districts and parents and resulted in 10 arrests according to state police. In Herkimer County, the following locations were checked and the following arrests were made.
In Oneida County, the following locations were checked and the following arrests were made. All of these people were charged with endangering the welfare of a child, and additional charges are pending, according to police. Troopers are calling the operation a reminder to New York State smoke shops that the legal age to buy tobacco products or nicotine vapes is 21. Other stores checked by officers of Herkimer included R&B Tobacco, Zoom and Smoke, East Main Street, and Herkimer Tobacco Shop, but were found all to be in compliance with state laws. Yorkville Smoke Shop, West Dorminic Market, Iron Lung, and Camden Gourmet Deli, as well as Smoke Shop in Oneida Counties, were also found to be 100% in compliance. And you know what, folks? This is the proper way to fight underage youth use. Go after the bad actors that are selling these products to the children, not the stores and the industry players that are already following the rules. And speaking of some bad actors, crime report, three Thai police suspended for soliciting bribes in e-cigarette case. Three police officers in the Hat Yai district of Songkla, the southern province in Thailand, are under investigation for soliciting bribes from three men caught crossing into Thailand with electronic cigarettes. The three victims revealed that the police asked for 10,000 baht from each of them to waive penalties. Pakara Sirithorn revealed on Facebook that he and two of his friends were arrested by police officers for having three electronic cigarettes and two bottles of e-liquid at 10.40 p.m. on September 3rd. At a police checkpoint in front of a patrol station in Klong Hai Subdistrict, Hat Yai District, Songkla Province, they were charged with using and possessing e-cigarettes. The officers seized their electronic cigarettes, vape juice, and ID cards, and made them take a urine drug test, which turned out to be negative. The officers informed Pakara and his friends that they faced a fine of 50,000 baht for possessing an electronic cigarette. The three men admitted wrongdoing and agreed to go through the court and prosecution for possessing an electronic cigarette. Picardo revealed that one of the officers said, you know, it doesn't really need to go to court if you agree to pay us 10,000 baht each. After they refused, the officers reduced the charge to 5,000 baht each to waive the penalty. And once again, the three men said no. After an hour of discussion, the police said that they would forget about the whole thing if they simply paid a total of 10,000 baht in cash between them. Bacara agreed and asked for a receipt, but the police refused to provide it and threatened to jail them if they continued playing games. The men paid and were released without receipt. Bacara decided to spread the story on social media to highlight police corruption and warn others. All right, all right, all right. So maybe Thailand wasn't the best example of bad actors. As I'm sure the end result is these people went back to smoking combustible cigarettes because of Thailand's prohibitionist, ridiculous regulations. So let's jump to the Republic of Korea to see the right way of doing things. Jung Yoo Seok, adult smoker, vaping conversion, and youth access regulation at the same time. In order to normalize the environment of the domestic liquid e-cigarette market, he argued, adult smokers should have a complete switch from the beginning of the year to a complete vapor, and youth should have an environment where access is prohibited. In addition, for environments with higher tax rates, than in other countries. 
It was suggested that switching to a closing tax instead of the current pay-as-you-go system could solve the problem of taxes that cannot be paid or walked at present. And the Ministry of Finance expressed the position that the issue of the closing price tax and the pay-as-you-go taxation method should first have objectified figures that can be measured against harmfulness. In other words, vaping is 95% less harmful than smoking. So, the Republic of Korea needs to adopt a framework where smokers are encouraged to switch to the harm reduction products and only pay an appropriate proportion of tax found on the most harmful products. When this is combined with limiting access to youth, everyone wins and public health will improve. Kang said, it seems that the tax rate and tobacco definitions will need to be discussed at the level of the whole government. On this day, Lee Sung Ki, director of the Korea Tobacco Regulation Research and Education Center, emphasized that the situation in which both users and sellers are driven to the shadows is a situation in which the health of adolescents is also threatened. It also stated that the vaping market characteristics and the system need to change in response to market changes. And to this end, it is necessary to amend the law, to monitor illegal transactions, to monitor marketing, to regulate liquid, to liquid and nicotine, to regulate the appropriate tax rate, to monitor the use of behavior and vaping, to identify, to manage, and to formulate regulatory measures. And listen, folks, I know, I know it gets lost in the translation, but it all boils down to the fact that the Republic of Korea is just now getting to the point where they're going to change their laws and regulate harm reduction products. And this article right here just goes to show there are people fighting for this all around the globe. It doesn't matter what country you look at, you can always find a conversation about vaping and why it's so important for everybody to become an advocate and fight for our right to vape. Just not too long ago, we talked about the Philippines and how they've introduced the grading of tobacco products according to the degree of health risk. In July, 2022, after much discussion, a new law to regulate vaporized nicotine went into effect in the Philippines. The new rules regulating vaping and electronic cigarettes take into account the practice that has developed in some developed countries of segregating nicotine-containing products according to the degree of harm to consumers' health. Once again, folks, it all boils down to the fact you have completely different aspects of harm potential with vaping and harm reduction products on the lower end of the spectrum where it cannot exceed 5% the harms of combustible tobacco. And on the other end of the spectrum, where you have the cigarettes that are 100% harmful. And it all boils down to the fact that these shouldn't be taxed more than 5% the rate that cigarettes are taxed. If you want people to switch to the healthier option, well, that's exactly what you gotta go do. And this article even jumps into tobacco regulation in Russia. Let's go take a look at that. Tobacco regulation in Russia is one of the most modern in the world. At the same time, doctors, representatives, consumer groups, industry, and state are confident in the need for further improvement of the measures taken. Ways to change the regulatory policy for nicotine-containing products in Russia. Discussed participants of the session, informed consumer choice. From risk modification to risk-based regulation at the last St. Petersburg International Economic Forum. According to the head of the Association of Medical Specialists for Risk Modification, senior researcher at the Russian National Institute, Russian Medical University, Pitogova Alexandra Razanova, it is necessary to support measures that allow smokers to be informed in detail about the risk associated with smoking to support effective regulations leading to a reduction in cigarette com consumption. 
to protect minors from nicotine consumption in any form. But at the same time, people who continue to smoke should be able to switch to the less harmful alternatives. The state's regulatory policy should take this into account and not only work on bans, but also provide possible solutions that help consumers make an informed choice, said Alexander Razanova. I'm not gonna go into the rest of the article because quite frankly, it gets lost in the translation when you try and read the translated text. But you get the point, you get the message. It's quite clear. Vaping is better than smoking. And it's actually quite pleasant to see the arguments for harm reduction to be adopted universally around the globe. And that's what this is all about. Become an advocate and do the right thing and make sure that the governors and your legislators and your representatives in government put the right laws into effect. Prohibition doesn't work. And a matter of fact, Prohibition is a bad way to deal with flavored tobacco. On November 8th, 2022, Californians will be able to vote up or down a law prohibiting the sale of flavored tobacco products statewide. The referendum, Proposition 31, would undo Senate Bill 793, a 2020 law that bans the sale of many flavored tobacco products. But has yet to go into effect. The prohibited products are vapes, menthol cigarettes, and of special note, fruity and sweet flavorings like sour apple and gummy bear. Californians will be better off without the ban, which disproportionately affects the vaping market. It does more harm than good by pushing users towards unflavored tobacco products, which we all know are cigarettes. Tobacco policy should focus on harm reduction and vaping is less harmful than smoking. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I could go on and on and on pointing out how vaping has the potential to save 1.1 billion smokers lives and how health agencies, not judges, need to be promoting tobacco harm reduction. But folks, I know, I already know how long this video is, and I know how long I've already kept you this week. So how about we jump to a quick summary of some industry news before we get everything wrapped up for today. New drag, new halo, Vupu drag, new products released. On September 9th, Vupu unveiled two brand new products of the drag series, the drag H80S, and the Drag E60. The Drag H80S is 15% smaller, making it the most compact drag mod ever. World-leading vaping brand Vaporesso has unveiled a new set of six colors for its Vaporesso X-Ross 2 product, the only open pod system vaping product on the market to bring home a Red Dot Award in 2022 for design. The new colors are named Aurora, Neon, Vitality, Violet, Sierra Blue, and Gold. We'll grant Vaporesso users even greater artistic license to express themselves when using these award-winning products. Next up, Vaporesso's new Lux X receives positive responses with hundreds lining up in UK and France. In the UK, Vaporesso launched an extensive brand exposure campaign throughout London. For four weeks, 80 bus lines across central London featured Vaporesso advertisements. In total, the large landscape panels on double-decker buses throughout Goldpack, Westminster, Camden, Victoria, Totham, Court Road, Oxford Street, and Covenant Garden were seen by almost 50 million consumers in the country's most fashionable and wealthy areas. And last, but certainly not least, S'more invited to address FDA industry meeting. S'more understands and fully supports the FDA's mission 
to protect public health and reduce tobacco use to minors. Smore has been actively pursuing innovation in vaping technologies and making continuous improvements in the manufacturing process so as to improve the quality and safety of vaping products. It is Smore's core belief that innovation and regulation will work in tandem to provide less harmful alternatives to adult smokers while reducing tobacco use by minors. Oh man, what a mouthful. Well, folks, that wraps up the Global 20 Vape Science Advocacy News for the week ending 9-16-2022. Please, please feel free to leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys want me to change the format of what this news report is, please feel free to let me know. If you just rather have a summary rather than snippets from the articles, I'd be happy to comply. It's all about keeping you guys happy out there and keeping you informed and asking you to become an active advocate for the products that empowered us to quit smoking. So my wish is always peace, love, and a hunky vape to end cigarette combustion. Have a great day. Got this frog in my throat. I wish I knew where my allergy pills were. And OBS has messed it up once again. It sets a default. It's not supposed to be default. Heated tobacco product or evaporators. Cut. While the world's leading jurisdictions generally have legislation. Cut. Recycling companies such as Gayaga. 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 Gayaka. Gaiaka. What is a Gaiaka? Cut. Dr. Brad Radul. Dr. Brad Radul. Dr. Badrul Chowdhury appointed Chief Life Sciences Officer and, as we all know, Dr. Matthew Holman appointed Vice President, U.S. Scientific Engagement and Regulatory Strategy. Both are firmer. Firmer? They're both firmer. FDA officials, cut. In the old days, you know, that was true. <sighs> cut. Oh yeah, you wanna get on this recording too? Go figure. Cut, I didn't like the way that sounded. So we're gonna try it again. Ready? Vape pens and vaping liquid currently are exempt from the state's tobacco taxes through various cut. I am just tongue-tied and twisted this evening. I can't get this recording done right. Ready? Cut. 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 Cut.